Houston on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. And I'll tell you, we're down to the last wire of the show, last half an hour. Our guest tonight has been filming for years UFOs or something over Nevada. That's kind of scary. You know, it makes me wonder how safe we are where we're living. If there is unidentified objects, if it's in Las Vegas, maybe it's near any military base or any any place things could be going on. We're just not seeing it. Well, anyway, Steve, we're back on. Yes, hello. Yeah. But anyway, I got some yeah. questions. If a person wants to start out in this hobby or to get proof, you know, to convince themselves or others that we're being visited. What type of equipment to do something reasonable do they need? Both and camera and lenses and a computer. What what do they need to invest? Yeah, yeah. Um, what I did is I bought a gamer's computer because those are always full of a lot of RAM, a lot of memory to use. I, I also bought three over the years external hard drives that each one is one is a one terabyte I have a three terabyte and a five terabyte external hard drive because videos take up a lot of spaces on a hard drive. They'll fill your hard drive up real quick. So you need to store them somewhere away from your computer so it doesn't start making your computer run slow. Um, you need some good binoculars. And you can get decent binoculars for 25 bucks on Amazon or wherever. You need a, a decent tripod, same thing, maybe 30 bucks. Um, where I like to spend the money is just on the camera itself, and that would be the best that you can do for your budget. I mean, I'm I'm seeing on Amazon now people buying camcorders that are pretty good. I mean, 4K camcorders for $250 or more. I paid 600 for my Canon back in 2014, so they're a lot cheaper now, and they're even better. Um, I would highly recommend a night vision monocular to anyone because even if you don't see UFOs, you are still going to see satellites. You're going to see things that you never thought you'd see. You see shooting stars that you never thought, thought you would see before. Um, same thing with the camera. Um, you know, have, have money saved to get the best one you can for your budget. And start that way. You know, I'm still not where I want to be. I mean, I'd love to have cameras that cost, you know, three or four thousand dollars and just give you these crystal clear images. But I, you know, I just can't afford that right now. Um, and maybe I never will. But you can always try to do the best you can with what you do have. Well, yeah, and the technology you know, on this cameras aren't that great. I can say this technology has advanced. You know, I took I, one other passion I've had. I've been in broadcasting since 76. I started in radio when I was 12, you know, amateur CB and all that. But before that, I was hooked on photography and I, I have shot professionally uh, in a lot of my pictures at one point in the 90s appeared in various publications uh, around the world. I was quite known under a different name for my photography. I can honestly tell you this technology wise, you can go out now and spend about $1,200 for a little like Panasonic, uh, half frame, you know, mirrorless, uh, camera that shoots 4k and a lot of actually production companies for commercials or even movies are buying these because they're disposable because of the price they don't have to go out and right. buy a hundred thousand right. dollar camera anymore they go out and buy a twelve hundred to two thousand dollar camera put a good lens on it and they can shoot movies besides stills on it that are cinema quality and they also can do infrared on some of them so you know I, that might be a good way to go down the road yeah it's amazing i so you know i'm always looking to do better i you know when i was in the computer industry the two words our, our mantra was continuous improvement. And that's possible no matter what it is you're doing in life. There's always a way to improve. And so that's the way I go. You know, I try to always improve. You know, you try never to go backward. 
just keep going forward, keep improving, keep an open mind, you know, uh, who knows what's possible. And believe me, I was 57 years old when I saw my first UFO. I've seen hundreds of them now. So, you know, I urge everybody to keep an open mind and, and also, you know, if you're interested, make it a hobby. You might be surprised. You might be really surprised what you come up with. Well, are you scared, though, of being abducted, maybe be by filming the out there at night? Maybe they no, might detect that's, you? That's never been scary to me, um, Gary. What's more scary to me, quite frankly, and I'm just being honest, is when I began doing this, um, initially I didn't say the words Nellis Air Force Base at all. I was afraid. I mean, I you know, men in black, all that kind of stuff. Well, I, I don't want to say I was afraid, but 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 by the same token, I didn't want to do something really stupid or put my family in danger or anything like that. You know, I'm I'm of the mind right now that um, maybe something is going on because they don't seem to care that I do this. You know, and and I'm not, I'm not being a conspiracy nut, but. You know, at the same time, I'm showing some pretty amazing stuff. And, you know, I, I just think it should come out. But, you know, E.T. E.T.'s probably here, too. You know, I, I'm sure I've seen both. Um, but, you know, there's theirs and there's ours. And sometimes you can't tell the difference. Um, I do want to believe, I, I do want to believe, though, when you see these reports in the past of them taking missile silos off offline or in Russia arming them like they're ready to launch and then at the last minute putting them all back to normal, you got to believe that maybe ET's here for all the right reasons. Or we hope. Or at I... least the most powerful ones. <laughs> at least the most powerful ones because apparently there's quite a few different species but I wouldn't know about that. Yeah, that would be, you know, really scary. Now, by the way, if you're trying to call in, I'm not taking any phone calls in tonight. Uh, my uh, Skype at lines have been constantly. Uh, I'll tell you how popular you are, Steve. I probably I don't normally even take phone calls in. And I probably had a good 30, 40 of them here in the last half an hour. The, the line going and people trying to call in with you. Uh, well, that's now, great. Yeah, that, that normally doesn't happen. Now, James, do you got a couple questions before we get into his YouTube channel and all that? Yeah, I got a couple of them. Um, Steve, have you ever tried to corroborate uh, with the local airports with some radar that, you know, coincide with any of your sightings? <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, but on that very first UFO that I told you guys about, it wasn't me that did it. It was my son. My, he's 35. He's the most logical guy in the world. He called Nellis Air Force Base. And he told them, before he told them what happened, he asked them what was going on in the sky where this happened, where this event happened, that I, the first video I ever captured. And that's where we got the story that it was a single jet fighter over the base, or not over the base, over Las Vegas, overpopulated areas doing this. Only one, too, and at 8.30 at night. Um, that was enough right there to tell me I can't trust anybody from there. Um, I do, I'll tell you what, if we ever talk again, I'll tell you about another friend of mine, and we can invite him on. His name is Chris Cabrera, and Chris Cabrera uh, was a security spe specialist at Nellis Air Force Base between 1998 and 2002. The way I met him was one of my videos is of a what appears to be a triangular object flying sideways towards Nellis to land. Now, that's how I met him, because his comment about that video, even though he was there many years before that, was that that video was, the two words, extremely familiar to him. And that they even the even the security guys out there had scary stories and had had their own tales and their own versions of high ranking officers saying you didn't see anything, don't talk about anything. 
Well, he, Chris, Chris is willing to talk and he is a very eloquent, sharp guy and he's a good friend and he's not afraid. So, you know, it's real. It happens. Um, you know, you do worry about it a little bit sometimes, but you know, I'm 65 years old. I was a smoker for many, many years. I'm still healthy, believe it or not. And I, I just figure, what do I have to lose? How about your wife? Fantastic topic in the world. How about your wife? Does she ever get scared of what you're doing? No, because she doesn't. My wife is, uh, she's a Catholic and she has her beliefs. She knows that I see UFOs. She's happy about it because she has fun with it. You know, when the uh, Discovery Channel was here, it was also Rob Riggle who was here. He's got, he's the guy who's going to have the new series on the Discovery Channel. So Rob Riggle from, you know, Saturday Night Live, The Daily Show, Colbert, uh, the movie The Hangover. You know, we get all kind of interesting things that happen with regard to this now. And nobody's ever threatened us other than trolls online, where I get that every day. So, you know... Um, she does her thing and I do mine and I'm kind of glad she's out of it. I don't want her to be involved. Interesting. Now, if they want to find you on YouTube, how do they find you? Yeah. Okay. This is easy. You guys, first of all, I don't do Twitter. I, I'm not a Twitter guy. Okay. But you can find me on Facebook. You can find my, my group page. You can find my personal page. And you can find my YouTube channel by doing hashtag UFOs over Vegas or pound sign UFOs over Vegas. If you do that in Google, four out of the first five results are all going to be those places. The fifth one is Twitter, and it's not me. It's just people talking about UFOs over Vegas. Interesting. Now, Facebook, how can they find you on Facebook? Same thing. Just do that. And the first five results in Google, I did it during the break. Out of the first five results on Google, with just doing the hashtag UFOs over Vegas, number one, number two, number four, and number five were all those pages. It was it was uh, Facebook and YouTube. and But Twitter, but I'm not a Twitter person. Okay, now James, we got just like two minutes left for uh, Steve. Do you have a question? Another one? Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you ever um, look for these UFOs during the day, or is it strictly night only? No, I do look for them during the day, and I have a couple of day uh, uh, things uh, that are that aren't anywhere near as impressive. They're much harder to to, to find in the day. And the other thing is too is this is Las Vegas. In the summer, <laughs> you can go outside for maybe five minutes and your camera is going to be fried, just sitting out there waiting like I do at night. I get hot staying out there at night in the summer. But, yeah, I don't, I don't work like that in the daytime here doing that. But I do look. I mean, I would love to have a lot of daylight captures. But the, 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 the easiest time to do it is at night. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever think about going to another, you know, maybe a mile across the valley or wherever and try to film from like a top of a mountain or something to get a different angle of these UFOs? Well, I've done that. Yeah, I do that. I do that all the time. I mean, I, I've done that probably a dozen times, but, you know, and I've had luck a couple of times. I even took people with me one time and had a really good night. But um, for the most part, it's just guesswork. Um, and that once again, that I have that best seat on the planet already just by walking out my back door. I mean, my, there's people in town that would love to come sit in my backyard. That would be their number one choice. So why go anywhere? You know, I mean, I do, I want to start branching out and doing even more, but you know, that involves spending a lot of money and it's money that, you know, we're not poor or rich. Uh, but, but, you know, I just don't have that kind of money to spend on, you know, doing it all the time. Okay. Thank you.
Well, that makes also a lot of sense. Well, anyway, Steve, I got to cut you off here tonight. Uh, I just want to say thank you for coming on. And you know what? Everybody go on Facebook.